Prim, a once thriving resort town sitting alongside Interstate 15 in Clark County, Nevada, has a long and storied history dating back to before the Great War of 2077. Known for being a budget version of Las Vegas, it catered to tourists travelling between Los Angeles and Las Vegas, offering them a taste of the Sin City with its casinos and attractions. However, the Great War radically changed the landscape of Prim from a bustling resort town to a struggling wasteland community. The late 23rd century marked a turning point for Prim as it positioned itself as a promising trade town following the expansion of the New California Republic NCR, into the Mojave. The town capitalised on the growing traffic between New Vegas and NCR, offering its services to travellers who couldn't reach or didn't want to venture into New Vegas. These included a casino, a hotel, several shops and a courier way station, all under the protection of an effective sheriff. However, a wave of destruction hit the town in 2281 when the convicts of the New California Republic Correctional Facility, the NCRCF, broke out and formed a gang known as the Powder Gangers. The gang invaded Prim, leading to the tragic deaths of the sheriff and his wife, plunging the town into a lawless existence. The residents were forced to seek refuge in the Vicky and Vance Casino, resulting in a stalemate with the convicts who now controlled the town. Some fortunate individuals like Samuel and Michelle Kerr managed to escape the turmoil and establish themselves at the 188 trading post. Prim transformed into a lawless hell under the convict's reign, which saw the Bison Steve Casino turned into their headquarters. The NCR maintained a token outpost on the town's eastern edge, manned by the 1st Company of the 5th Army Battalion. Despite the town's strategic location in the southern Mojave, the NCR forces were understaffed and under-equipped to reclaim it. When the courier arrives in Prim, pursuing the men responsible for their near-death experience, they are greeted by an NCR trooper warning them about the convicts controlling the town's centre. The courier has a part to play in deciding the fate of Prim, leading to further clues as to the whereabouts of the men who almost killed them. Before we continue following the courier's story though, let's take a deeper look at Prim, exploring the significant role it plays in the world of Fallout New Vegas teasing out a captivating story of survival, adversity, and even some old world charm. The Bison Steve Hotel is a testament to pre-war prosperity. It was one of the many casinos that lit up Prim, though not without stirring a fair share of rivalry. The owners of the nearby Vicky and Vance Casino perceived it as competition and weren't shy about spreading rumours. Even Prim Slim, the local robot, was programmed to deflect inquiries about the hotel, asserting that the dealers cheated and the roller coaster wasn't built to code. Post-war, the Bison Steve Hotel reopened under Old Laurie, a resident of Prim who rented out rooms. However, she abandoned the hotel a few months prior to the events of Fallout New Vegas, leaving the building vacant once again. The most distinctive feature of the hotel was the El Diablo roller coaster a twisting, winding spectacle that wove around the entirety of the property, serving as a thrilling tourist attraction for the hotel and casino. The tracks have since taken on a more sinister purpose. A group of escaped convicts have claimed the tracks as their outpost, shooting at anyone unfortunate enough to venture into range. For those intrigued by the parallels between fiction and reality, it's interesting to note that the El Diablo roller coaster is based on the real world Desperado roller coaster that surrounds the Buffalo Bills Resort and Casino in Prim, Nevada. The Nash Residence, a humble abode that doubles as a storefront in the heart of Prim, is home to Johnson and Ruby Nash. It's also the sole location of the Mojave Express in the wasteland. Situated opposite the Bison Steve Hotel and the Vicky and Vance Casino, the Nash Residence is initially found abandoned until the completion of the My Kind of Town quest. It houses a broken robot named EDE, who once repaired can become an ally to the player. If the courier restores order to Prim, the Nashes return to their home, with Johnson Nash acting as a traitor and Ruby Nash offering her signature Rad Scorpion Venom casserole in exchange for one Rad Scorpion poison gland. Johnson Nash also sells a bladed gauntlet while Ruby's casseroles can be found on the table. The Prim Sheriff's Office stands as the local law enforcement residence, once occupied by Sheriff McBain and his wife. 
It's a monument of Prim's history and its past tragedies. The McBains were brutally murdered in their sleep, their decapitated corpses discovered by the courier upon their first visit to the town. Upon entering the sheriff's home, one is greeted by an eerie emptiness. In the bedroom to the left, a shocking scene unfolds with the remains of the McBains on the bed. However, they disappear a certain period of time after the courier's first visit. An unexpected treasure trove can be found within the premises. Two cowboy repeaters in poor condition hidden under the bed, along with boxes of 308 rounds shelved in the main room. A sheriff's duster and hat lie abandoned at the foot of the bed, symbolic remnants of the bygone era of law enforcement. The deputy sheriff of Prim, Deputy Beagle, resides in a basic square shack on the northwestern side of the town. Furnished with a bed, some shelving, a small dining table and a refrigerator, it stands next to the sheriff's office. The shack is tagged as owned and the courier will experience karma loss for trespassing or pilfering any items within. To the western side of Prim stand two NCR tents housing Lieutenant Hayes and Sergeant McGee. Each tent is equipped with bedrolls for the weary soldiers, with McGee's tent further adorned with shelves containing ammunition boxes. The NCR trooper Tyrone is integral to the side quest, Don't Make a Beggar of Me, which involves dealing with a drug racket operating in the shadows of Prim's NCR operation. The courier can either inform Lieutenant Hayes about Tyrone's smuggling operation or return the chems to Melissa at the Great Can Encampment. Each decision paves the way for a different end to the quest with implications for both the courier's reputation and the stability of Prim. Next, we'll take a closer look at the Vicky and Vance Casino. This establishment pays homage to a bygone era of the American Wild West, drawing its name from the infamous outlaw couple Vicky and Vance. If order is restored to Prim, the casino's unique interior is allowed to truly shine. Beyond its front doors lined with rows of glittering slot machines, the casino floor features an artifact of the darkest day in Vicky and Vance's career, their death car. This grisly centrepiece stands as a testament to the outlaw's violent end, serving as an eerie contrast to the chattering cashiers and the clinking chips. Upon the casino's reopening, patrons are once again free to partake in the bustling exchange of chips and currency, eagerly anticipating their turn at the casino's games. Gamblers of all inclinations are catered to within the Vicky and Vance Casino. For fans of the classics, blackjack and roulette are available, while slots offer an enticing option for those after a bit of fast-paced excitement. Blackjack aficionados will be pleased to know the Vicky and Vance pays 3 to 2 and dealers adhere strictly to the Stand On 17 rule, maintaining an air of authenticity and fairness. However, the allure of the Vicky and Vance casino extends beyond its gambling offerings. It plays host to a number of enthralling side quests that promise an exciting immersion into its backstory. A team of baronic mercenaries invites players into an encounter with Layla and her gang, NCR deserters turned raiders who see Prim as ripe for the taking. Through careful dialogue, tactful bribery or combative prowess, players can dispel the threat and ensure the casino's continuous operation. A pair of desperados' eye beckons the curious to investigate the old getaway car displayed proudly at the casino's centre the memento of the notorious Vicky and Vance's escapades. Detailed plaques and well-preserved costumes enhance the display, while Prim Slim, the casino's host, offers some colourful commentary. The big winner of Vicky and Vance Quest rewards the casino's most proficient gamblers with gifts varying from Vicky and Vance casino chips to a stealth boy in reinforced leather armour. However, players should beware. Anyone earning over 2,500 chips will be permanently banned from the tables, though they are still welcome to enjoy the casino's other amenities. Next we come to the Prim Houses. Seven houses in total are surrounded by a wall on three sides and can be accessed from the east. Four of these houses stand to the south, while the remaining three occupy the north side. A testament to the ravages of time, only four of the seven houses are intact and accessible. These remaining houses, however, carry their own sense of suspense. Stepping inside counts as trespassing, a fact the Prim residents are not shy about sharing. They will sternly warn the player to leave their house, 
failing to heed this warning promptly turns all the residents in the house into hostiles. The northwest house remains unoccupied, but inside you'll find an average locked wall safe and a lonely skeleton, eerie remnants of a bygone era. In the southeast house, adventure seekers might stumble upon a notable piece of loot, a sunset sarsaparilla star bottle cap resting on top of a shelf. So, what is the fate of Prim? Let's tell the story of the courier and their effect on this unfortunate yet resilient town. In the dust-choked expanses of the Nevada wasteland, the wind carries echoes of past deeds, whispers of perilous quests, and tales of a lone figure known only as the Courier. Amid the vast desolation, a small town named Prim sits in limbo, its fate balancing on the edge of the Courier's gun. Our tale begins in the austere administration building of the NCR Correctional Facility where Eddie, a stern figure and leader of the renegade powder gangers, is in need of an able hand. Eddie, his features obscured by the gloomy shadows of the room, presents the courier with a quest. He entrusts them with a trio of tasks that seem straightforward but are mired in the dense politics of the wasteland. Each task is a test, a challenge to sway the balance of power. Chavez, a renegade powder ganger suspected of forming his own crew, is the first issue the courier deals with. They find him south of the prison and with a careful touch of diplomacy or force, manage to dissipate the brewing trouble. Their actions are acknowledged by Eddie, their reputation with the powder gangers increasing slightly. Next, they turn their sights to a travelling merchant who has taken residence at Jean Skydiving. A facade is peeled back to reveal a bounty hunter, his plans unravelled by the discerning eyes and sharp words of the courier. This unexpected revelation brings another nod of approval from Eddie, and another boost to their standing among the powder gangers. However, the courier is plunged into a pivotal conundrum. Eddie, unaware of the storm brewing in the courier's mind, tasks them with acquiring critical information about the NCR's plans for the prison. Choices lie heavy on the courier's shoulders. Side with the powder gangers, or betray Eddie and the gang in favour of the NCR. Their decision will set the town of Prim on a new course, the echoes of their actions reverberating across the vast expanse of the Nevada wasteland. While I Fought the Law spins the wheels of fate in Prim, another quest, My Kind of Town, weaves itself into the narrative. The captured Deputy Beagle is key, as he might hold invaluable information about the courier's own assailants. Braving the hostile environment of the hotel, the courier finds Beagle, Negotiations ensue, revealing information about Benny and his men, and the quest takes a turn. Beagle is freed, his request for a new sheriff becoming the final leg of the journey. And so, the search for a new sheriff begins. Each potential sheriff represents a unique path, a distinct future for the town of Prim. If the NCR is chosen, a negotiation with Lieutenant Hayes leads the courier on a treacherous journey to Major Knight of the Mojave Outpost. Convincing the Major to send reinforcements to Prim is no small feat, but their success means a safer, albeit heavily taxed, Prim. If Myers is deemed suitable, the NCR Correctional Facility is the next stop. Securing an NCR pardon for Myers poses its own hurdles, but once obtained, he readily takes up the mantle of Sheriff, bringing a new kind of order to Prim. Lastly, if Prim Slim is deemed worthy, a swift reprogramming gives Prim a robotic sheriff. Though not universally accepted, the town gradually returns to normalcy under Prim Slim's vigilant optics. The decision made, the remaining convicts inside Bison Steve Hotel meet their demise. However, danger continues to lurk in the outskirts, a constant reminder of the volatile wasteland that lies beyond. As the dust settles and the echoes of the past begin to fade, Prim stands under the guidance of its newly appointed sheriff, its fate entwined with the intricate story of the courier. <laughs>